Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and I just want to thank those of you who have been writing to me. I hope I've been able to address some of your concerns. Yeah, I kind of um, tend to try and help people with complex matters and try to kind of give them a sense of what they can expect if they put in an application. Um, I'm not a lawyer, I don't have no expertise, but I can direct you. Anyway, today I decided to talk about Englishness versus Britishness. And I consider myself ethnically English because I was born here and politically British because of the connotations that anybody who is black or brown cannot be English. Now, the United Kingdom was brought about in about 1707 when um, Scotland and, and Wales joined. And then in 1801, Ireland joined. But when you think about British, it, I mean, that's what British is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the combination of England, Scottish and Wales. But you will find that British has been assigned to anyone who's not white English. And that is where the confusion is. Because, you know, even though I'm born in England, you know, I'm hardly ever, I don't think I I would be able to assume the, the title of English because for some reason English is assigned to white Anglo-Saxons and the medieval Old English. So what happens now with um, what's happening with Brexit and this Britishness and Englishness? Because if we're all British, well put it this way, if Scotland leaves the UK well, and um, Scotland and Ireland leaves the UK and we're left with Wales and we're also left with 3.2 EU nationals and we're also left with um, what we call them now we'll call them non-UK citizens it means that England is want, going to want to identify with English even more and that's when the problem's going to start. The problem's going to start when England wants to be just for the English. And it's a bit difficult because for so many of us who've been born here and who've been here for so long, for so many years, sometimes 20, 30, 40 years, and what they're calling migrants, which are outsiders and which tend to mean those who leave from a foreign country, and say come to the UK are now being forced from a country that they were born or they have lived for a very long time to a foreign country so it's kind of put a different spin on it so what is happening now then what is happening now is that the government is trying to sort out the good from the bad the wheat from the chafe who is good enough to be in England and who is not what are they going to do about all these EU nationals that they have an obligation to? I think there's about 3.7 million who are who have now become almost like foreign nationals because they are going through the same. They will have to go through the same long control lines at the airports. They're going to have to pay for expensive extensions for their visas and they're going to have to have them repeated and they're going to have to pay um, to have the permit cards repeated, you know, the um, residence cards. So they're not going to be treated any different. And as much as the UK is saying we're going to make it easier for them and we're going to do this and there's going to be less immigration controls for the EU nationals, they're still going to be looking for those ones who are not exercising treaty rights. They're still, so everybody's going to go have to go through those problems the same way as they're trying to siphon out um, the, the overstayers in the UK. So both are going to be undergo the same problems. And, you know, it, is a, it does get a bit uncomfortable when you think about what is happening and this drive for, Bre for Brexit and you wonder what is behind it and what really is behind it. They say it's about immigration control, but is it really? Why would it be about immigration control if they keep bringing immigrants in? Why would it be about that? It's much bigger than that. 
It's about the financial mess that they've got themselves in and they don't know how to get out of it. It's about all the mistakes that they've made that they want to cover up and they're using immigration as an excuse. That's what it's about. It's not about anything else other than that. So the immigrants and the migrants are the scapegoats for those all the mistakes that the government has made over the years. And so that is why that there's this drive to leave, even though they know that when they leave, they're placing um, the UK in a tenable position. And they'll say that we're scaremongering. They'll say, oh, well, you know, people are this. They know, they know that once they leave the EU, that they are absolutely destroyed. They know that. They know they can't stand on their own. But they have they have different plans. It's not about that. It's not about that. Um, in cahoots with America, who knows what they've got planned. But they have plans. And it's got nothing to do with immigration. We're just the scapegoats. Whether we're born here or we're not born here. Whether you're from the EU national, whether you're EU born or you're EU in Britain whether you're Turkish in abroad or you're Turkish here, whatever the situation is, all people who are foreign or considered foreign by accent, if you have a non, if English is not your first language, by accent, by colour, by race, by culture. They call it identity politics. And so... That is what they're working towards. So now, for now, they'll get rid of all the, um, they're trying to get rid of all the overstayers. Then it'll move over to the British and who knows what will be next. But we're all sitting ducks, just waiting to see what's going to happen. Doesn't feel comfortable, but it's going to be a rocky ride for everyone, including the government. So that's all for now. Bye bye.